Alright, we're back to part two of my Dirty Day collection. And we start this one out with 2000's Warning, which is the most commercially unsuccessful Green Day album, which I think is really a pity because I really like it. Um, it's a very good album, in my opinion. Uh, not one of their best, but it does have, I, as you saw earlier in part one, I have all of their singles from Warning that were pressed on vinyl. This one has many good songs. Huh? The song warning I'm not a big fan of. I like it, but it's got really good ones like uh, Blood, Sex, and Booze, Fashion Victim, Jackass, Minority. As I said, Minority is one of my favorites. Misery is a really good song. Like, it's got like all kinds. It's got like a saxophone on it. You know, this was really when Green Day started to seriously experiment with different sounds. This one's broken. This is the booklet here. Has another track list. Warning. I love the artwork of Warning as well. Here's the CD. And it's got another funny picture of the guys in the back. And warning, the warning era was when Green Day went on tour with Blink-182, which I really wish I wasn't like five years old when that happened, because that would be an awesome show to go see. That's it. Okay. So, after warning, warning was incredibly unsuccessful, like I said, uh, commercially. So the band was kind of that was kind of the most turbulent time in Green Day's history. It was after, well, you could say that about like the trilogy era too. But you know they were seriously considering breaking up. Uh, Billy was going through some troubles with like alcohol and drugs, and he I believe he went to rehab after Warning. Um, and to make it worse, the band was working on an album called Cigarettes and Valentines in 2003. And the uh, master tapes were stolen. And rather than uh, you know, put that back together, the band kind of had a moment of clarity and just decided that they were going to start over. And uh, really put their all into their next album. But actually, I'm getting ahead of myself because before that... In 2001, they released a, uh, a Greatest Hits album, International Super Hits. It has all of the singles from uh, Dookie through Warning. That's 21 songs. Yeah, it's 21. Um, uh, the 21 is including um, the two new songs, which are Maria, which was on the um, Waiting vinyl. Was B side and Pop Rocks and Coke, which I do believe was the unreleased track. So now some cool pictures. It's got a picture of the four albums. Next, from 2002, is Shenanigans. Shenanigans is a B-side collection. It's 
So it has B sides from I believe Dookie through Warning. Maybe just Nimrod, I'm not sure. It's got 14 songs. Um, some of them are B-sides. Uh, the song Outsider. Yeah, well it has to be Warning, but the song Outsider is on, I believe, the Warning B-side. Which, I, again, I believe is a cover from the Ramones. Well, not 100%. Tired of Waiting for You is also on here. Um, is a cover by the Kinks, or from the Kinks. Uh, they, they got all kinds of good ones. It's not their best stuff. It's B sides, but it is pretty good. Uh, some of my favorites are uh, You Lied, Don't Want to Fall in Love, which is a B side from Insomniac. Yeah, Scumbag is a good song as well. Scumbag is on Warning, on my Warning vinyls as well. This one's really tight, so it doesn't want to turn. That's the CD. The back is the same, kind of similar to the cover. I love the artwork in the booklet of this. Or at least that picture right there. This one folds. In the back, it's just really cool. Seeing all those pictures. Okay. Now. Back to 2004, which was when the band was going through all these, all those tough times, and it led to my favorite album ever. Um, it's their second best-selling album, American Idiots. This is just, in my opinion, this is as close to perfect as an album can be. There is not one bad song on here. Every song is just in the perfect spot. It's essential to the story. Um, this is a concept album, so it does tell a story throughout the album. It has two songs that are nine minutes plus, and they are like five songs put into one. Of course, Jesus of Suburbia is the most famous one, but also has Homecoming, which is the first one of the first songs they wrote for the album, but uh, actually. And Trey and Mike wrote two pieces of this song. They, they are the lead singers for those two pieces, which is cool. But yeah, this song can be played on repeats over, and, or this album, so it can be played on repeat over and over again. It is a wonderful album. It was turned into a Broadway musical. I'm sure you know. But American Idiots, right here, is one of my favorite songs ever. Just and Jesus of Suburbia is probably, in my opinion, the best thing that I've ever written. Like American Idiot, my favorite song, but Jesus of Suburbia is just epic. And the way they transition from like portions of the song to another in Jesus of Suburbia is perfect. Can't say a bad thing about this. Although I can't say too much bad about Green Day in general, because I just love Green Day. But... And, boy, it's just impossible to pick a favorite off of this. Um, American Idiot, probably, but Jesus Burby is great. Holiday is a badass song. Just absolutely taking on the Bush administration and the Iraq War. Boulevard of Broken Dreams is a song that I just really relate to personally. Um, 
know, it's just, it's just about feeling lonely and feeling like you're alone in the world. Um, She's a Rebel is a great song. Homecoming, Wake Me Up When September Ends, just my absolute favorite album. And after that, they released a live album to go along with it in 2005 called Bullet and Bible. And it has most of the songs off of American Idiot, as well as some of her Dookie, Insomniac, Warning, almost all their albums. They don't have anything from Kripunk or 1039, though. That's the inside. And this is a digi pack. It has a DVD right here and a CD. And the DVD is really cool as well. Um, I really enjoy watching it. Okay, yeah. Okay, so after that, it was a while before we got another album. And the next album is from 2009. 21st Century Breakdown. And it's very much in the vein of American Idiot. It's another concept album. Although, I think the story's not as well put together with 21st Century Breakdown as it is with American Idiot. Like, we don't really get a res resolution to this story. But, I do love a lot of the songs on here. Um, we got 21st Century Breakdown, the song itself. Is really good. Um, just a great way to kick off the album. Like the first lines are, um, I "Was born into Nixon, I was raised in hell." Like that was, that's a pretty awesome lyric. Uh, know your enemy. Some people criticize "Know Your Enemy" because it gets a little repetitive, but I like it. Um, yeah, "East Jesus Nowhere" is a really good song. 21 Guns, American Eulogy is one of the best things on here. Uh, this one's tight. All right. So this is the CD, the book. Uh, this is actually the special edition. This is like a limited edition that I bought off of eBay. But when it came out, it came out with not only the CD itself, but it came out with a extra CD, Green Day Live in Japan, and it has five songs off of American Idiot, off of a live performance from Japan, which I thought was pretty cool as well. That's behind the disc. This one is in kind of tough shape, it's pretty old. And it has three acts, you saw that. Act one is Heroes and Cons. And it has the lyrics. It's a big booklet because this is a long album. This album is over an hour long. It has 18 songs. This is Act two. Charlatans and Saints. It's East Jesus Nowhere. Oh, over here. Last the American Girls is one of my favorite songs as well. It's a picture of Trey. Kind of in a graffiti song. Act three is um, Horseshoes and Hand Grenades, which starts with the song Horseshoes and Hand Grenades, which is a very kick ass song. Rowan Goggins, we have American Eulogy. American Eulogy is kind of 
this album's version of Jesus of Suburbia, except it only has two parts to it. Mass Hysteria and Modern World. And then it rounds out with Sea to Light. So it does kind of have a little bit of an optimistic ending, but there's really not a true resolution to the story in this album. That'd be the main critique I would have. That, and it just doesn't have the energy of American Idiot. And American Idiot's hard, if not impossible, to pop, so. It's still very solid. This is Awesome as Fuck, which is the live album for the 20th century, 21st Century Breakdown. Um, this has a CD and DVD as well, but what's different about this one is that. It's, uh, the CD and DVD are different. So first of all, there's more songs on the DVD. The DVD is from only one performance, which is in Japan. Whereas the CD, each song is from a different show, which is kind of cool. It's different. And they have a lot of older songs on this one. Like Going to Pasolacqua, I completely forgot about that one. That's one of my favorite, out or favorite songs about 1039. Uh, J.A.R., Jason Andrew Relva, Who Wrote Holden Caulfield is on this. So yeah, they played a few uh, older songs. And they also played um, Cigarettes and Valentines, which was the album they were working on. It never released. They played the title track off of that. So, and I believe that was the first time we heard that song. That's the CD. This one flips over so you can get the DVD. And this one has pictures of the band performing in it, which is cool. I kind of skip through because I'm trying to hurry up a little bit. Track listing again. Alright. Last, but probably least, <laughs> is the Uno Dos Tres box. It has all three albums. This is just the standard CDs. Um, my copy of Uno is cracked. You can see that. But I bought it that way, so I don't really care. It's just the case. It doesn't really matter too much. Dose. And I like the trilogy. A lot of people really didn't like it. I think it's good. Trey is my favorite. Many good songs on Trey. 99 Revolutions and Dirty Rotten Bastards are probably the two best songs off the trilogy ever, or off the entire trilogy, I think. Um, Brutal Love is an excellent way to start off the album. Yeah, it's, it's probably the worst. I don't know all that they've done as the trilogy, but when you consider how great the rest of their stuff is, they're still pretty good. Like, and all these look the same, they're all just different colors. So I'll show you one of them. The inside is all the, or the booklets are all the same except for the pictures are different. And obviously the lyrics are different. I just get stuck in there. They all fold out. Okay. 
So that's it. Um, thank you for watching. If you made it through the whole thing, uh, Green Day did just release Revolution Radio last weekend, and I picked it up. Of course, I picked it up three times, so I have three uh, things to show you for that one. That's gonna be a separate video. So I've got the standard CD, the lyric book, and the red vinyl. So look forward to that. Bye.